Welcome to App Design Tips. I'm going to show you the top 10 plugins I use in Adobe XD. And when I say top 10, I really mean top 12. 10 just works better in the titles. First one on the list is Adjust Size by Shortcut. So we can already nudge things using our arrow keys left and right, but to resize things, we traditionally have to use this width and height field right here. So if we want to bypass that, we can go in here under Plugins and Adjust Size by Shortcut. Here we have a few options to shrink or extend the widths. So let's say we have some elements like this that are 25 pixels on the left and 28 pixels on the right. Well, now we can use the Control and the 4 and 6 key to move this to the left and right, and we can get that size looking right. And we can also use the 8 and 5 key to adjust the height, and very quickly we can nudge things around. Next up is the plugin Mimic. Let's say you're browsing websites to get inspiration for your next design, and you find one website that has the fonts that you like, the colors you like, and you want to start off your design with that. Well, with Mimic, you can find a website like this, Clean Air Works, and just simply copy the URL in your browser, when you go back to Adobe XD, you can click on Plugins, go over to Mimic, and here you can paste the URL. Now what this does is it creates a style guide for you with the colors and fonts that this website is using. So now when I click OK, we can scroll up here, and we can see all the colors this website is using, and we can also find and install these fonts and begin our design with the same kind of style. Next in the list is Swap, Fill, and Border. Now this comes in handy when you want to swap the fill and border. So if I click on this traffic light here that's green, I can go over to plugins and simply swap fill and border. And there's also a shortcut for that. So if I hold down shift command X, I can toggle that on and off. And if I want to toggle multiple ones together, I can select both of them. And now I can swap borders and fill for both of them, changing the traffic lights. Now before I move on, if you're new to this channel and you like to see app design tips and tutorials such as this, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon to be notified of future videos. Now we have Color Blender. So if you choose two colors and you want to see what the colors look like in between these two colors, we can click on Plugin and Blend Colors. Now it's going to ask us how many times we want to blend this color. So if we choose five times, for example, we're going to see one, two, three, four, five different steps in between here. And now we have seven different colors we can use as gradients. And now, if you want to know what 50 shades of gray looks like, you can pick a black and white shape. And we can go over here into blend colors. And let's type in 48 here. And once we hit OK, we've got 50 shades of gray. Next, we have the calendar plugin. And there are some times where we design calendars in our UI. So this makes it a lot easier. If we go to plugin and we click on calendar, we can choose our cell size, I like 100 by 100, and then we can choose our month, and we can choose the setting for weekdays. And once we click OK, we're going to see that calendar here, and we can click in here and design any one of these elements, change the fonts, the colors, anything that we want. And this really gives us a head start when designing calendars. Now speaking of editing your calendar, there's another plugin that I want to show you that makes this a lot easier. And this plugin is called Selection. We can see that we have over 30 different squares here. We may want to design these all with the same style. So we can click one of those. If we click on Plugin, we can go over to Selection, and now we can choose to select everything that has the same fill. So that selects all of these boxes, and now we can change the colors of all of these together. And same thing with the font here. So if I click one of these, I can go back into the Plugin, go to Selection, and I want to select all of the same font. I can do that, and then I can change the color here to red, uh, maybe a more pleasant blue color, and makes editing much easier. Next up is Icono, and Icono lets you search for icons in a library and drop them into your design. Now, there are many icon plugins out there, but this one's free, and it's one of my favorites. So if we click on Plugin, we can click on Icono, and from here, I just want to search for a calendar, and as soon as I do that, I can see my calendar here, and I can choose the weight of this outline stroke. So if I want this to be a 1, 2, or up to a 4, I can change that here. And then once I click Insert, that icon is going to drop up into my artboard, and I can change the color here, and change just about anything that I want. Next up is Content Generator, and as a designer, this is one of the most annoying things that I have to do, adding Dumma data to my design. So here I can select multiple text layers that I want to rename, and I can simply go over here into Content Generator, and I want to populate these fields with names, so I'm going to click on both male and female names, and those are generated. 
I can do the same thing over here with times or dates. So if I select these items, go back in here to content generator, I can choose a date and we can see those change. Next up, we have the Photo Splash plugin. And this is a plugin that lets you tap into thousands of images on unsplash.com and search for images to populate in areas like circles or squares. So I'm gonna select these circles here. I'm gonna click on plugin and I can go over to Photo Splash. I'm gonna go ahead and skip the tutorial and I can just search for a person. Let's go ahead and try to find some pictures here. And it's going to select the first few for us. And I don't want these because they're not people. Um, I want just full faces. So I'm gonna select a few of these that I like, maybe these. So we can see that I have five selected. If I select one more, it's still gonna say I have five selected. It's just gonna deselect the last one that I clicked on. So now that I have five selected, I can click apply. And we can see that those images are now populated into my design. Next, we have the plugin Busy Charts, and this lets us create bar graphs, line graphs, or pie charts with ease. So I'm going to click on plugin here, go over to Busy Charts, and let's start off with a column chart. First thing we're going to do is import a CSV file, and I happen to have one on my desktop that we can use, and this has all the data. And we want percentage to be the metric that we want to use, and we can set our width to 900 and our height to 500. And I think that all looks good, so we can just click Create here. And we have a bar graph that's created and we can resize this however we'd like. We can grab the individual elements and resize these or color them however we'd like. And we have full control. Next, I want to show you the pie chart. So let's delete this. We're going to click on our artboard again and go into the plugin. And let's click on ring chart. I guess they have it named differently. So we can add some data in here. So let's say we have a 20, 30, 10, 40. And that should be 100%. We want the diameter. Let's make this uh, 800 pixel diameter. We want the thickness of this ring chart. We want it to be 80. And the gap, we can make that uh, two pixels in between each of the rings. And a corner radius, let's try 10 pixels just to make it dramatic. Now we can also add some labels, but I'm just gonna hide this for right now and we'll click create. Now we have a beautiful ring chart. And again, we can change these colors however we'd like. Now we've just finished with our 10th plugin, but I have two more that I want to show you. The first bonus plugin we have is Angle, and this lets us apply any one of our designed artboards onto an image such as this. So if I zoom in here, the first thing I want to do before I use this plugin is use the pen tool. If we create any sort of shape right here, I'm going to just create a skewed rectangle that matches the shape of this phone. So I'll do something like this, and as long as it has four corners here, I'm going to create a white fill. I can click on plugin, then click on angle, and I want to apply a mock-up. And here it's going to ask me which artboard I want to apply this to. I have a health artboard that I want to use. I can choose the pixel density. I'll go ahead and choose four, and the image quality. And I like to leave this on default orientation, and you can change this if you don't get desired results. But let's click apply. And in a few short seconds, we have our design mocked up at an angle to match the angle of this phone. Now let's zoom out and look at our work. And this looks ready to share on Dribbble. So that brings me to the next and final plugin. This is the Share on Dribbble plugin. And before I do that, I actually have to create an artboard and wrap my shot inside of an artboard um, because this is the only way that this Dribbble plugin works. So now that this is in an artboard, I can click on Plugin, Share Dribbble Shot, and now we can share this directly within Adobe XD. And those are the top 10 plugins plus two bonus plugins I like to use in Adobe XD.